course, these days, dressing up in blackface is considered offensive and racist, but the act of white actors darkening their faces and portraying African Americans as less than human has a long history in America. Our Leanne Trotter explains in this week's Race in Chicago series. Ah! Homewood Flossmoor High School students caught driving around in blackface claimed they didn't know the history. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau accused of donning blackface years ago. Back when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up. Megyn Kelly's NBC morning show canceled after she defended the idea of wearing blackface. Whether it's due to ignorance or indifference. Blackface dehumanizes black people. And that's why it's so wrong. As director Spike Lee points out in his 2000 movie Bamboozled, many famous entertainers wore blackface. Robert Downey Jr. received critical acclaim for his blackfaced character in Tropic Thunder. Both Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel apologized for wearing blackface. It set the tone for entertainment in America. This long-running racist art form dates back to the 1830s. Thomas D. Rice considered the so-called father of minstrelsy with his Jim Crow character. The performances typically characterized black people as lazy, ignorant thieves, distorting their features and culture and creating a narrative of black inferiority. Blackface minstrelsy was one of the first forms of mass entertainment in America. And blackface minstrels went all around the country and perform to rave reviews. With the abolition of slavery in 1865, minstrel shows with white actors distorting African-American features and behavior grew even more popular. Oftentimes, those blackface characters were, were the only black people that white people saw. And so they thought those were really um, the looks and behaviors of black people, and they were not. These images moved to the big screen as seen in the 1915 blockbuster film Birth of a Nation, with white actors in blackface behaving as savages and the glorification of the KKK. In that particular case, it was portraying the black man as a rapist. So when we think about blackface, what is happening is it's also reinforcing negative stereotypes of black about black people. But the history is complicated when you consider black performers like Burt Williams participated in this mockery because it was the only way they could get work. The new Amos and Andy show. The uber popular Amos and Andy show on WMAQ radio in 1929 was an outgrowth of the Sam and Henry show on WGN radio. By the time Amos and Andy moved to TV, they replaced the blackface characters with black actors. Eventually, mass-marketed blackface entertainment went out of style in the late 50s with the onset of the civil rights movement, although it did not disappear entirely. However, the damage of seeing black people as bumbling idiots had far-reaching consequences. That's a rationale to not give them the right to vote or um, equal access to housing and education or access to the political system. Issues that are still problematic to this day. This past era uh, that has ended uh, in the White House proved without a doubt that America is still the most racist country in the world. Centuries in the making and centuries in the undoing. Leanne Trotter, NBC5 News. So important to know the history so you don't repeat it. Right, thanks, Leanne. Absolutely. Mm. Great story.